Many religious leaders have equated kingdom service solely with soul winning. Everyone is not called to be a minister. But true kingdom service is about service to humanity. This misunderstanding is one of the reasons why religious leaders have lost their political authority. It also plays a role in contributing to the extreme poverty in Nigeria and Africa by extension. Through the preaching of a manipulated doctrine of prosperity and obedience to superior enslavers, can there be a prosperity without productivity? Today, let's dive into a critical and a controversial topic. How do religious leaders contribute to the country's problem? But first, let's take a walk through history. Throughout history, religious leaders had immense political power. Thinking about it from Moses' time leading the Israelites out of Egypt to Samuel anointing Saul as the first king of Israel. This leader wasn't just a spiritual guidance. They were a political figure with control over their communities. Moses wasn't just a prophet. He was a lawgiver and a leader, guiding his people through the desert, organizing the society and establishing laws. Those laws are what forms the fundamentals of our modern day law that operates in our cities. Fast forward to the time of judges and to the times of kings, where Israelite demands for a king like other communities. They were asking for a political leader. Samuel anointed Saul as king of Israel was an action that systematically dethroned Samuel from being the political head, making him just the spiritual leader of the Israelite community. This was a first glimpse of the so-called separation of church and state that operates in all over the world today. Fast forward to the Roman Empire. We see the rise of Christianity with the conversion of Emperor Constantine. Christianity went from being a persecuted set of people to becoming the state religion of the Roman Empire. This shift was a great significant move at that time. Later, the Pope emerged as both the political and the spiritual head influencing kings and emperors. In fact, the Pope could crown and dethrone any king, excommunicate the ruler, and had a significant seat in the political matters across the whole of Europe. In the dark age, the actions and the policies of the church actually contributed to the significant global problem that we face today, including colonial exploration, religious conflict, persecution, corruption, suppression of intellectual freedom and contemporary social issues. Yet, Pope retained their political and spiritual authority. But things began to change when enlightenment and the rise of modern nation-states. The suppression of church and state became a fundamental principle in many parts of the world. This separation was aimed to prevent the kind of political control that religious leaders once held ensuring that spiritual guidance and political governance remain distinct. Now, let's bring it back to Nigeria. How do religious leaders contribute to the country's problem? The influence of religious leaders on the present Nigeria society cannot be overstated. However, the current trend of prosperity preaching has led to several socioeconomic issues that need to be critically examined. Prosperity teaching which emphasize wealth and success, often without the necessary emphasis on the productivity and hard work has profound impact on the nation's socioeconomic fabrics. For instance, research shows that Nigeria is one of the countries that prayed the most. Despite the country's high level of religious activities, Nigeria's unemployment rate, is a, as of 2023, stood at about 33.3% according to the National Bureau of Statistics. This raises the question, can there be prosperity without productivity? If we must liberate Nigeria and Africa by extension, it must start from the church and the mosque. This prosperity gospel is appealing, but there is no prosperity without productivity. In advanced country, the focus is always on creating values, encouraging people to think critically and solving other people's problems, which leads to contributing to the common goods of the general society. For the past couple of years, religious has become a tool for creating division among people. Instead of creating unity, inflammatory messages fuel hatred and violence. Each religion are presenting themselves as a more superior one than the other. According to Army Conflict Location and Event Data Project, are shown that 
There have been over 500 incidents of religious violence in Nigeria between 2015 to 2022, resulting in thousands of deaths and displacements of people across the nation. From Monday to Sunday is church service. The church services are crafted to bring more Nigerians to church. While in the advanced world, people are busy crafting, exploring and creating things that will make the world a better place. Why spirituality and faith are important? They shouldn't overshadow the need for productive work and contribution to the society. Picture the outcome of a student who fails to balance his spirituality with his study. I guess you already know the result. The Bible clearly explains how a state or an individual can be prosperous. And this is it. You can't be prosperous without being fruitful. And fruitfulness means productivity. You can only be productive when you refine your gifts and your ability. And most of it, that refinement process is not in the church or in religious centers. It can either be either in the factory or in the science laboratory or in the field of study. Doing your best to craft and improve yourself. Then you find a way of improving your abilities by multiplying your products, which means doubling your productivity and also what? It replenish your products, which literally means enlarging your distribution chain. After two, three, four, five distribution chain. Your prosperity will only last when you dominate the market or the industry. And this is what the big firms or the multinational firms in our country understand. It is sad that religious leaders equate the part of prosperity mainly with kingdom service. I will mostly accept the truth. Everyone is called to serve, but not everyone is called to be a minister, a pastor or an evangelist. Even God himself has vividly explained this through the 12th tribe of Israel. Some are to serve, which are the Levi. Some are to be in government to govern their affairs, which are the tribe of Judah. Some they be the military to guide the other family, the tribe. It is sad that religious leaders are to quit the path to prosperity mainly with kingdom service. Trust me, this is just after the truth. Kingdom service is about service to humanity. This should be your source of inspiration that drives your productivity. So how can spiritual leaders contribute to our national development. It is simple. This is the time to focus more on preaching citizen productivity, encourage you to be active, creative, and industrious, promoting the mentality that real prosperity comes from hard work and innovation. It is necessary for our religious leaders to enlighten stories of successful individuals who have achieved greatness through providing unique solutions to contemporary problems and persevere when it's not even thought coming. Our religious leaders need to encourage more engagement in civic duties and our community service contributing to the national growth and development and not a focus on what members will bring to the church. This also could involve organizing workshops on skills development, encouraging the promotion of local businesses and advocating for a better education system. Let's discuss the role of religious in education. The education we now enjoy today was brought to us by missionary. But it is sad that today, schools built by religious body are too expensive for their common members to even attend. Average members of the church cannot attend their institution. In many parts of the world, religious institution has been at the forefront of establishing schools and universities. This institution has shaped minds, promote literacy and foster critical thinking. It is now time for our religious leaders to play a similar role in education, advocating for policy that improve the quality of education and encouraging their followers to value education. Thanks for watching, folks. If this message resonates with you, please share your opinion on the possible ways where the religious body in Nigeria has gone wrong. If you haven't subscribed yet to the channel, please click on the subscribe button to subscribe to keep receiving impactful and wonderful content from us. And don't forget to also click on the like button so that the YouTube algorithm can share this video to more Nigerians, to more people, so that Nigeria and the rest of Africa can be a better place.